I'm going to ask Vani Mandava to come up. Vani's a director of data science outreach for Microsoft, and she has been working with us on a collaboration for cloud computing credits. She's going to tell you a little bit about that. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me here today. Um, uh, I, I have 10 minutes. I'll probably take less than that and leave some time for questions. Uh, so I'm going to start my presentation with a video that uh, uh, the outreach, the Microsoft Research outreach uh, effort for data science produced about a year and a half ago, and then I'll kind of follow it up with some information. So this is... Across in the U.S., there's about 5.1 million people that suffer from heart failure. 25% of those patients actually readmit back to the hospital within three months and then about 50% of that population readmitted to the hospital within six months. Nearly one in five fee-for-service Medicare beneficiaries, they get readmitted to the hospital, and the cost of that um, is about $26 billion, of which about $17 billion are avoidable. University of Washington Center of Data Sciences has done a phenomenal job creating this machine learning, predictive analytics tool for readmissions. What it does is it creates, it actually tells you exactly when to discharge a patient. We use a stack of technologies to make it happen. At the lowermost level, we have big data integration platforms that we use in Azure, so SQL Azure and its related components. We use a variety of virtual machines of different sizes on Azure for the modeling components. And then the modeling itself, we have started using Azure ML. So we have an external layer, then we have a communication layer, and then we have an analytics layer. Once the appropriate model is selected, it will get passed to the analytics layer where it will get scored and the score is going to come back and being converted to JSON or, or, or XML or even as, as an HL7. One piece of that deployment is an administrative dashboard that helps track the 10 riskiest patients, as an example, uh, currently being seen and help and manage those risks. The second thing that we're working on now is to actually deploy the risk score. So when a patient gets pulled up into the cardiovascular dashboard, you know, along with all their vital signs, you can also see you know, their UW risk of readmission for heart failure score right there. I think um, you know, the real benefit of a, a tool like this is, is that it really is looking at what we now consider to be population management, which is not just to look at individual patients alone, but look at individuals in cohort with a, a whole population of patients. What makes the most difference is, is that you get to actually see patients getting better. Okay, so the reason why I showed this particular case study is because uh, this was a group that was working in the university system along with a partner, a hospital healthcare provider, and for a long time they weren't really getting anywhere. I mean, they, they, they were doing research, but it was fairly siloed, and they weren't really making real impact with the research. Uh, what really accelerated their research was when they started to leverage cloud computing uh, to share data, to work with, their, uh, with, their, with, with, with the hospital partner. And uh, within a matter of 18 months, this group has now spun out into a startup company out of University of Washington. They are well-funded. They just went through Series A. They have revenue and so on. Uh, so this not only shows the research impact, but it also shows real-world impact. It shows, uh, you know, real impact in a problem that is well understood and a real, um, you know, um, uh, it, it's really going to move the needle on uh, uh, readmission, which is a, a significant problem in the healthcare industry. Uh, so why data science in the cloud? I'm, I'm, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but uh, uh, there has been this paradigm shift over the last few years. There's this real evolution that we're seeing where when you go from uh, working on just your you know, uh, local clusters or laptops or even some of the HPC systems that universities are uh, you know, collaborating with supercomputers and so on, uh, to the cloud, uh, you really, uh, you know, are able to surpass many of the barriers that you face uh, uh, in data sharing and uh, 
uh, and just being able to collaborate and work with larger groups across boundaries and so on. Uh, so what my group does out of Microsoft Research is we enable uh, data scientists, researchers, academics, nonprofits uh, with data sets and with cloud computing resources. Uh, we have two partnerships right now with the National Science Foundation. One is this one with the uh, Big Data Innovation Hub, and there's another new big data solicitation uh, that was just released last month. For each of these initiatives, we have awarded $3 million worth of Azure uh, each. Uh, we provide training, and we also have a bi-monthly RFP where we provide smaller grants to uh, academics who apply for them. Uh, that's the URL for our program pages. Uh, this is the announcement from last year, uh, and if you, we already have, Rene already has some ideas as to how these credits will be used by the Northeast Big Data Hub, but if you have a need for some of these resources, or if you have ideas on how the Northeast Big Data Hub could benefit from this, please contact him, and uh, we work pretty closely together. Um, that's all I have. There is a training on April 11th. There's a flyer outside as well. It's uh, at New York University. Uh, this is a training that we've been doing, and we keep the content pretty fresh. We do it on university campuses, and we are doing one in collaboration with the Northeast Big Data Hub uh, in April. Please uh, feel free to uh, sign up for this. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me.